Hello and welcome to Ferryside in South Wales. I'm here to see a boat, nothing to do with canals or rivers, but an interesting little boat which I think you might enjoy as well. Ferryside is a small village about six miles south of Carmarthen. It looks out over the Towie estuary, which is just over half a mile wide. On the other side is the village of Llanstefan, population about a thousand. At low tide, the only way to get from here to over there is by road, and it's an 18-mile trip up the side, over a bridge and back down again. But at high tide, there's a much more fun way to get across. This is the new Carmarthen Bay Ferry Service. There had been a ferry here since the 11th century. It was part of the pilgrimage route from St David's to Canterbury. But in 1958, the ferry service stopped until a group of local enthusiasts resurrected it three years ago. A few of the earlier directors who founded the company uh, applied for Coastal Community uh, Communities Grant. We were successful in being awarded £300,000 grant and that was used to uh, design and construct the boat and then to run the, the ferry company for the first two years with a group of employees. In 2020, of course, the pandemic shut things down. Until now. We're now back without any government funding or any grant funding. We're running on a volunteer basis. All of the directors are unpaid directors. The only people who are paid are the skippers and they're paid because they're qualified commercial skippers. But the crew mate is also qualified, but they are a volunteer and donate their time freely. But the boat has something unusual about it, which, if you look closely at this image, you'll spot. Yes, the boat did just lower a wheel into the water. In fact, it's got little legs at the front and back with a wheel on the end of each. It is an amphibious boat that can blast across the bay using standard outboard motors, then crawl up the beach using hydraulically driven wheels. It's very unusual. It's the only uh, ferry of its type in the UK. Uh, so it's the only ferry that uses the, the sea leg system that we've got on there. It does need a, a specific type of sand uh, to get up and down. It, it can't go through mud or anything like that. So it has to have nice firm uh, sand to actually operate. The very shallow beaches mean the tide comes in and goes out a long way. So using an ordinary boat coming onto a jetty just wasn't feasible as the jetties would have had to be about 200 metres long. Or passengers would have had to trudge out through the mud and water. An amphibious boat solved the problem. We looked at various different options. Uh, we didn't have the capacity plus also the damage to the environment by building substantial pilings and a further jetty. So after putting the design out um, for tender, it came back with the, the boat that we've got now, which is using a sea leg system, which is from a company in New Zealand. The boat was actually designed by a marine architect who was based in Holland, but the boat was actually built and assembled in St David's, maybe 25 miles west of here. The ferry's not huge, but can carry 10 passengers and five bicycles. All wear life jackets and the boat has a life raft too. A ladder drops down from the side to bring people aboard, including their pets. It's kept between shifts at a secured compound just along from the beach, and this means it needs to wend its way out from there twice a day when the tides are right. The wheels go down and it backs out, with the driver guided by a spotter.
beware of passing boats if you park your car here. There's a slipway for the lifeboat, which the ferry goes down, ready to start operations. The boat can only operate for about two hours either side of high tide, so they usually run as a ferry at the start and end of each shift and take passengers on longer tours of the estuary in between. And they've started running sunrise and sunset tours too, which are proving popular. The whole idea is twofold, to bring the communities together on either side of the estuary and to boost tourism to the area. There's plenty of seals, we've seen seals just about every day. Um, there are otters, we've seen otter footprints, but um, usually they're, they're only about, about first thing in the morning, last thing at night, further up river, up the River Towie. Um, and there's, there's, there's so much wildlife here. Uh, it's said actually that um, the reason there's so much wildlife here is uh, 10 centimetres square of mud is equivalent to a Mars bar, and that's why there's so much thing, you know, animals feeding on it. I'd experience the ferry, now it was my chance to see what the tours are all about. The boat backed into the water. The wheels were retracted. And we turned and headed down the estuary. We're going to cover the three uh, rivers, which is the Gwendryth, which leads up to the um, Kidwelly. Then we're going to go across uh, to the Tav, which goes up towards Lan, And then we're going to go up river to the um, Tawi Boat Club. With twin Yamaha 115 horsepower motors, the ferry's capable of reaching around 40 miles an hour. And we used that speed to blast up towards our first vantage point. It wasn't the clearest day, but as you come towards the mouth of the estuary, you can see right the way to the tip of the Gower Peninsula, 10 miles away. There's a church on the neighbouring hillside with an intriguing story or two. What I ask people is, um, where's the village? Most churches have got villages, um, and lo and behold, we're actually floating above the village right now. So there was a, a village called Horton here, um, and during the 15th century, they suspect, there was a tidal wave that came up the Bristol Channel um, and actually wiped the, the village out. So I, I think it's probably the most unlucky village in Wales, because not only has that happened, the, if you look at the actual parish church itself, you can see that there's two different coloured stone. Uh, during the Second World War, a bomber coming back from um, Swansea had a, a, a couple of bombs left on board, so inadvertently just threw them out and unfortunately landed on the vicarage, blew the vicarage apart uh, and unfortunately killed the, the vicar's wife, but also took the roof off the, the parish church and that's why it's got two different colours uh, in it. So, um, And at, at low water here, because we're, we're actually in the Bristol Channel um, water, uh, the tidal way here, it's the second biggest tide in the, in the world, um, you, the water will go down here and it will reveal the actual footings of where the village once, once was. Looking across to the tip of the Gower, we see the Worm's Head, a bit indistinct in this weather, I grant you, but so-called because it resembles a sea serpent's head on the horizon. Those two bits are its nostrils and behind lies its head, a bit like a crocodile or alligator in the water. Over to the southwest is Caldy Island, home to a community of monks that's been there since Celtic times. 
and immediately off our starboard bow, not Klingons, but Kinetic, a UK defence contractor which tests weapons along here sometimes. Then we moved into the River Taff, where the former home of poet Dylan Thomas is to be found. We headed off again back up the Towie. This house was once lived in by the author of The Mr Men, Roger Hargreaves, and also apparently Scott of the Antarctic. Further up river we went, back past Llanstefan. And on our right past Ferryside. You see on the hill Llanstefan Castle, built in the 12th century and now owned by a local businesswoman. Ferryside is slightly unusual in being host to a lifeboat service run by the St John Ambulance rather than the RNLI. There are about 70 such independent lifeboats around the UK and their lifeboat station is on the shore there. Our final port of call on the tour is the Towie Boat Club, where our skipper for the day keeps his own sailing yacht. There it is, Jeanette. The weather gave the estuary horizon a ghostly feeling. I love how it just vanishes. We started to head back. And the skipper couldn't resist showing off how manoeuvrable the boat is. Finally, we were back at Landstefan to pick up any passengers. The wheels descended. But as we headed up the beach, disaster, as the muddy sand was too soft and the wheels struggled. There was no option but to reverse off and try again. This does happen occasionally, they told me. We went a few yards further along and had another go. That jolt was where the wheels dig in. This time it was a success and the boat clambered to shore. The volunteers are keen for people to come and try the craft which they're clearly very proud of. Just come and enjoy it, you know, it's a fantastic experience. Um, you, you don't um, have to like boats or anything like that because it's, it's, um, it's a really nice, stable platform. Um, try and come when it's nice weather, um, but it, it, the boat does run in all weathers. It's a, it's a fantastic boat for, for all weathers as well. So uh, the only time we, we don't run the, the ferry um, is basically if we can't see or if there's very big waves that, that um, disturb the, the way that we actually go onto the, the shore. Um, but uh, it runs just about in any, any weather, yeah. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.